Hello, this is Toph from Trifo Productions with another Blender quick tip. Actually, it's not a quick tip. This is a Blender quickie for beginners. Um, I'm doing this tutorial because this is like the third complaint I've received on a certain tutorial I did a while back on how to create pants. I'll pull it up so everybody can see it. Now, I said in this Blender quickie for beginners, I did a tutorial on how to make pants. And I've gotten a third complaint on this video saying that hey you're not really creating jeans you're just creating a boring pair of pants well that's what's this, uh, written in the thumbnail it says pants it doesn't say jeans as we all know pants are jeans um, pull up the complaints here that's the third one I've received let me see it says thanks for the tutorial it's okay but it, it isn't what you show in the thumbnail and that's clickbait which it is not because I didn't say jeans I said pants you only teach how to make a basic and boring pant, not a jean. That's because in the title of the thumbnail it says create pants. It didn't say jeans. But just to kind of assist people who have complained about this tutorial, I'm going to create another Blender Quickie for Beginners tutorial on how to create jeans like this. Just to kind of appease or kind of silence all the the people who have an issue with the thumbnail image and the English statement here for some reason and it's just a simple uh, process I've downloaded an image from make human sorry for the uh, nudity there let's just kind of fix that as we go on and in, in order to accomplish this uh, the realistic look of jeans <coughs> excuse me you have to use blender 2.91 and above and I'll show you why as we proceed I'm going to just dictate the keys I'm pressing because of the fact that my keyboard shortcut um, uh, software the add-on isn't working properly so I'm just going to just tell you guys the keys I'm using but once you've downloaded an image or a model male or female the next thing you want to do is left click on it to highlight it and then go into edit mode by pressing tab and we're going to get rid of the top part and get rid of the feet. So I'm going to press A to deselect everything. Hold down Alt. And left click, let's say around the belly button area is what we want to get rid of. Left click there. So we can choose a series of vertices. And then I'm going to press Delete on the keyboard and delete the vertices. There's a little bit of a vert left. Vertice left, so I'm going to left click on that. And delete that also. And I'm going to go to, to the bottom of our model here. Zoom in, scroll up on our mouse wheel. Hold down Shift, the middle mouse button to kind of maneuver or pan around your viewport. And I'm going to choose this set of vertices here. So Alt, left click. Make sure you, you kind of hover. You can scroll in more if you want to be able to see what you're selecting. So I'm going to Alt, left click again. I want to choose this line. Alt left click and then delete vertices hold down shift middle mouse button drag alt and left click again delete those set of vertices and now we're going to go into I guess you can call it x-ray view let's click on that we want to see all the way through because we want to be able to select the vertices from front to back we want to get rid of the feet and the upper body so hold down B, left click and drag, and then press Control L to make sure you've selected everything, and then delete vertices. Let's scroll up on, on our mouse wheel, hold down Shift, middle mouse button, drag. Uh, B again to box select, and left click and drag again, and then Control L to select everything, and I'm going to press delete vertices and we're gonna get out, out of x-ray mode left click on that yeah my robovac is in here so if you hear like a humming in the background that's what's kind of cleaning up the room here so hold down shift middle mouse button drag up I'm gonna scroll up on the mouse wheel we wanna we wanna make this as flat as possible so I'm gonna alt left click again S Z zero to make this flat. We're going to do the same thing to the 
bottom part of both legs. So Alt, left click, S, Z, zero on our keyboard, enter, shift, middle mouse button drag, scroll up to zoom in, Alt, and left click, S, Z, zero, enter. And then we have the all the outer parts of the gene, so to speak, level, because that's what we that's what we're looking for. And the next thing we want to do, <coughs> excuse me, is we want to when when you're making jeans, you don't really have to. If you want to, you can do it like do do the seams down the side of the jeans and all that, but you would have to probably download some sculpt brushes that have uh, seams as the brush but we're just going to kind of avoid that because we're not going to be able to really like look close at the person to see the details in the jeans in terms of the, the seams along the sides or in the pockets or anything like that and we want to let me see next thing we want to do is kind of straighten out the top a little bit we want to make you know that that uh, flap in the front of the pants where your zipper goes, we want to kind of recreate that in the front. And we're going to press X to mirror across the mesh. Now sometimes this works where you press X or Y or Z and it will work sometimes. And sometimes it doesn't. If it doesn't work, you just have to do it manually. But we're going to press X to mirror what we're doing on our left or right to mirror on the other side. So we're going to left click. Uh, click on our move gizmo. I'm going to move this across. Okay, it's working. Let's scroll up, hold down shift so we can zoom in better to see what we're doing here. Scroll up again on our mouse wheel. Left click and drag over. We want to make this almost as straight as possible. This is where our uh, front, I guess, flap for our zipper would go. And let's turn that off again. And we're going to go into face select. So left click on that icon. And we're going to left click and hold down our shift. Left click, left click, left, 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 and one more time. Then E to extrude, E to extrude. And we're going to hold down our middle mouse button, kind of hover. And we're going to just kind of move our viewport around. Just hold down the middle mouse button, kind of move it around. And we're going to drag, left click and drag on the Y axis to pull this out a little bit. Okay, let's go back to the front view bar pressing 1 and let's tab out of that. You can see we've got our seam there and it looks pretty good, looks pretty realistic. Now we want to do the same thing. We want to kind of imitate pockets. And one thing that you, you have to remember is that when you're modeling something in Blender, it's always good, if you're wanting to rig it later on, it's always a good idea to keep it as one one piece model, so to speak. What I mean by that is that you don't want to go like shift A, then mesh, then add a plane or a cube or another part of a mesh and, and apply it to your current mesh because sometimes in rigging it doesn't seem to actually adhere properly to the rig or to the mesh that you're, is, which is the main mesh. Sometimes it, you end up having to uh, kind of fix that and sometimes it doesn't even work it when you uh, redo the weight paint at all so the best thing to do is that you just model from your your main mesh so we're going to do the pockets or what looks to be a pocket so let's press 3 on a keyboard to go to a side view and we're going to press tab and we're going to kind of make this look like the outside of a pocket so the same thing with the front seam we're going to left click Hold down shift, left click, left click, left click. Then E extrude, E extrude. Go back to the front view and we're going to pull this out a little bit. Now you can uh, mirror this to the other side, but like I said before, sometimes when you apply the mirror, mirror uh, editing and mirror editing mode, it doesn't really translate directly onto the other side. You have some like a lot of inconsistencies so sometimes better just do it one side and then when you've done this side go to the next side which is what we're going to do right now so we're going to press control 3 to go to go to our 
think this is the right side of our model, Control 3. And then we're going to left click, hold on shift, left click, left click. I think we went down, did we go down three or four? Let me go, let me look at the other side. Went down three, okay, control three again. So one, two, three, hold on shift, left click. E extrude, e extrude, one to the front again. Left click and drag on the X axis. And then when we tab out, we've got pockets here. Now, we're gonna go back to the front view, press one. Now this looks kind of rough and in order to get to the next step of the modeling process, we're going to have to subdivide our genes more. So we're going to go to our modifiers here. Let's left click on that modifier. And let's turn off. This was something from a previous tutorial. So let me, let me get rid of this. Turn that off. I'll get rid of it just in general. One again. Modifier. So add modifier and subdivision surface. And we're going to, the, the render's at 2, but in the viewport it's at 1, so let's crank this up to 2. And then we're going to click Apply. So that applies our uh, modifier to our mesh. Uh, you have to be kind of careful with the subdiv subdivision modifier because sometimes, if your computer's not strong enough, not sometimes, but if your computer isn't strong enough and you crank it up too high, it's going to cause a lot of lags and that's what you don't want. Now as you can see we have some issues here at the top where it's curved and we want to get rid of that so let's go into edit mode again tab 1 and we're going to do a loop cut at the top so let's press control R on our keyboard and from that yellow line left click and then drag it up Oh, okay let's go back let's apply the loop cut before we, we apply the modifier control Z Z Z. Okay, there we go. So tab again, Control R, apply loop cut and drag that up. And what that does is that it makes the top of our uh, seam for the flap in the front and for the pockets, it makes it pretty much uh, flat and level with the top of the pants, which is what we want. And then after you've done that, you can apply the subdivision surface modifier. So let's apply that. So press one, go to the front view. Let's scroll down on our mouse, hold down shift and drag up. You can also pan with this and then zoom with this also, which is in 2.9, which is pretty cool. So let's just use these just to avoid all the keyboard shortcuts. So let me drag this up. So now we have our pants. Now this step is why we need 2.91. And that's because we want to put in some creases in the jeans to make them look more realistic. And in order to do that, let's go into sculpt mode and let's drag this down. Now, only 2.91 and above has this feature in it, which is the cloth brush, which is this. So let's left click on that. And we're going to put some creases in our in our jeans here, but let's kind of reduce. Let, well, let, we can leave the radius as it is and the strength as it is too. So we're gonna turn off the x-axis we, we want to just make it we don't want it be want it to be symmetrical in terms of it being the same on the left as is it is on the right in terms of the creases but let's bring in some creases here and this is why this 2.91 is needed because we want to make it look as realistic as possible when it comes to the genes so you just left click and drag on your on the model on the mesh around the knees Press 1 on our keyboard. Looks pretty good. Hold down, or let's use our move move gizmo for the move view and left click and drag on that. So we're going to reposition this and scroll up on our mouse wheel. And let's put some uh, creases in the crotch area because, you know, when you sit down, you do have creases in this area also. And then let's uh, pivot to the rear. We can press, let's press Control 1. That automatically goes to the back. And let's put some creases back here also in the hind quarters, the back side as some people like to say. And let's put some creases in the knees too. Creases back there. And let's go back to the front view by pressing one and that looks that looks pretty good. It looks pretty pretty realistic as it looks in the thumbnail. So let's um, go back into the original layout. Or pressing layout. 
And the next thing we want to do is just add some texture to this. That's all we want to do, add some gene textures. Now, I'll provide uh, gene texture in the link in the description below this video. But I'm going to um, have the gene selected. Let's scroll down here. Let's left click on the material tab. Let's get rid of these two because this is from an old project. So let's delete that and delete that. And then let's make sure, let's see what viewport we're in in this EV, which is good. So we want to see what our pants are going to look like, the end product of it, without having to use cycles. Let's, lick, lick, let's click on this viewport here. And we have this. I want to change the world lighting system here because it's a dark gray. So let's left click on that. And let's make it a little bit lighter. And I like to make mine like a sky blue. This is really bright. Let me delete that light there. Let me see, make it make it a little bit darker. Okay. Wish we have our genes. We want to apply texture to our genes. Let's left click on the genes. Left click on the material tab. Left click on new. And let's call the material genes. J-E-A-N-S. Genes. And we're going to split our window here. Let's left click, hover our mouse over this corner. And when it turns into a plus sign, left click and drag down. And then we're going to left click on that icon and turn it to the shader editor. And for this to, we want to bring up the node wrangler, which is very helpful. And if it's not, if you press control to your keyboard and nothing happens, press G grab, go to edit, and then go to preferences and type in node, node wrangler. Make sure there's a checkbox in there and save it, and then it's activated. And you can press Control T, and it brings up. Um, it helps you set up the note system for this. Let's scroll up on our mouse wheel, left click, and drag over. Let's turn from UV to generate it, and we're going to turn from points to texture. And I'm going to navigate to where I've saved the gene texture on my on my computer. Blender textures. I'm going to scroll down. Let's see where this is. Scroll down. There it is. Double click. And there we go. That it applies it. Uh, but they're kind of stretched out. So we're going to change the layout from flat to box. And that takes care of that. Now, to me, the texture is a little bit too big. So I'm going to make it smaller. Left click in there. Left click, click again. And if you don't know, as a beginner, Blender does do calculations. I don't know how complicated the calculations can be, but basic division, multiplication, addition, it does it. So when you've left clicked in that uh, that um, slot there, forward slash four, because we're going to divide it by four, enter. Left click, left click, forward slash four, enter. Left click, left click, forward slash four, enter. Ooh. Okay, forward slash four, enter. And we're going to join these windows back together, join areas. Okay. Now you're probably saying to yourself, well, yeah, the texture's there, but what about all that detail that we put into it with the wrinkles and the creases and the flap in the front? Well, that's because the lighting is just flat lighting. Basically, it's just flat basic lighting. So we're going to put in the sun. That's how you can actually uh, portray shadows, realistic shadows, and Blender by what source of light you use. I've done a tutorial on that, which you can check out. Uh, we just scrolled through the Blender Quick Tips, and you'll see it there. But we're going to add a sun in here so we can see the um, detail in the genes that we've created. So let's uh, go Shift A. And then we're going to go to Light and add sun. We're going to pull this up. Let's click on our move gizmo. Pull this up. Pull it forward. Let me see. And we're going to rotate it. Let's rotate our window. Middle mouse button drag. And just press all. Let's make sure. Let's press three. So we go into side view. And then R to rotate. And then the one to look at it from the front. And let's darken our background so we can see more of the shadows. Let's darken our environment, I mean. Let's cl left click on that and pull this down. Yeah, so you can see, you can really see the shadows or the wrinkles in there. 
And let's turn down the speckler because they're a little bit too shiny. Let's left click on the jeans again. Hover over the corner. Plus arrow. Left click and drag down. Go back to our shader editor. Left click on that. Scroll up with our mouse wheel and turn down speckler all the way down. And then you can see the speckler has been eliminated. And that really brings out the shadows in the jeans with the creases. You can see that in the front, let's drag down here in the front, you can see the creases in the front and then the legs and then the flap in the front. Now for the pockets, you can actually, you can see a bit on this side, you can actually model, you can change this more, you can make them a little bit smaller if you wanted to. But we're just trying to simulate a pocket here, not an actual pocket that you can put your hands into, but just a simulation of a pocket. So yeah, so that's how you can make jeans according to what people were complaining about but that's how you can make jeans in blender the easy way so this is blender quickie for beginners hope this was helpful to you who have been watching and to the people who didn't feel that the first tutorial was wasn't actually accurate this is accurate for you guys to see and learn from so thank you guys who have subscribed in, who have subscribed in the past those of you who are subscribing now and those of you who will subscribe in the future and I will see you guys on the next one. All right, adios.